If you will, to stand up to your feet as we read the word of God. I am so excited for today's word. This month, we've been going through a series called Jaywalking Through James. And I got to tell you, our church is just spoiled with wonderful communicators of the word of God. If you enjoy the past few weeks, would you let the speakers know, Pastor Alding, right, Minister Dorian, amen. They did such a great and wonderful job just going through the book of James, and I am honored and blessed to be amongst the speakers today. We are going to be reading from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. So if you have your physical Bible, I give you some time. Say amen when you get it. Amen. You know you're a true believer when you have a physical Bible. No condemnation. I got my phone right here. No condemnation. No condemnation. Amen. James chapter 3, verses 1 through 10 says, should be on the screen as well. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Verse 3, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, and a small rooter makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting our entire bodies. It can set your life on fire, for it is set on the fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. Everybody say, no one. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poisons. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, speak through me. We ask that all distractions, Lord, that you just shut down all distractions, any plans that are made by the enemy, that you will help us to focus this moment and help us to hear what you have to say about mastering our tongues. And while we're speaking to you, oh Lord, would you please help Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns father. Lord, he hasn't won a championship in 16 years. The devil stopped him from going to the Los Angeles Lakers to win one with Kobe. Help him to win one this year if it is in your will. In God's name we pray and the church say, amen. While you're talking to the King of Kings, you better ask the desires of your heart. <laughs> Have you ever read a verse in the Bible that made you think this thought? This can't be right. Have you ever read a verse in the Bible where you just thought to yourself, that cannot be right? Don't shake your head, just wink at me, just wink. Okay, nobody's winking. I'm the only heathen here. That's fine. But there's some verses that you just think to yourself, come on, this can't be right. Matthew 3, verses 7 through 8 was that verse for me. Because it says that no one can tame the tongue. No one can tame the tongue. You got to understand because I love to talk. A matter of fact, I'm in the business of talking. Can I get an amen from all my talkative people? 
I just love to talk because it's easy for me to talk. It is like breathing. I could inhale and exhale. So I think and I talk. When I want to say something, I say it. When I don't want to say something, I don't want to say it. So when he says that no one can control the tongue, I say, that's not, that's not right. Because I, I think I got a good grasp on talking. Matter of fact, it studies say that between seven to 20,000 words, that's how many words you and I speak per day. Between seven and 20,000 words. Between men and women, guess who speaks the 20,000 words? I'm gonna leave that alone. So we are people that love to talk and have a habit of talking. Number two, it also says in scripture that, 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 that in Corinthians it says to capture every thought and make it submissive to Christ. So in my mind, I'm thinking I could control my words by capturing my thoughts. And God has given me the power to make every thought that I have submissive to the Lord. So what are you talking about, James? I could control my tongue. And then one day, I had an argument with my brother. And you know, before you, you know when you're about to have an argument with someone, and you talk to yourself first before you have that argument, and you say things like, I'm not gonna get mad and I'm not gonna scream. And I, I take pride in not using profane language when I have discomfort with someone. But y'all, when I heard his voice, words came out of my mouth that I didn't even know I still knew how to say. Just things that you should not even be saying to somebody. I mean, I told him about himself from today to the end of the year, and it felt good. I'm just being, I'm just confessing. And the Holy Spirit told me, that's why you can't control your tongue. So the title of my message this morning is, Help Me, I Can't Control My Mouth. If you will go on this journey with me, I'm gonna give some reasons on why we cannot control our mouths and also three powers that I see that the tongue has that James was talking about. The first reason I'll tell you that why we can't control our mouths is because we have an uncontrolling heart. You have to understand that in, in the Bible, it says that a very, very popular verse that we all know it says that out of the abundance of the heart, the what speaks? The mouth speaks. So if you can't control the heart, you can't control your mouth. The verse says that if you are a good person, it will produce good things. If you are an evil person, you produce evil things. And out of the abundance of what you produce and what is stored up in the heart, that is what is going to come out. You see, my problem was I was trying to contain my words and my tongues because I thought it was a cognitive thing. If I, I, I trap my, my, my thoughts, if I put it in a cage and don't say what I'm thinking, then I'll have control. But let me tell you this, you may be able to put your thoughts in a cage and the words that people tell you, you may be able to chain them up, but how can you chain up your emotions? How can you chain up your heart? The heart is the one that masters the mouth. And you can hide anything, but you can't hide how you're feeling. Sooner or later, the mouth is going to have to repeat what the heart has already said. My question is, what's in your heart? What are the words that people told you years ago that you still have in your heart? Because it's not a conscious thing, it's unconscious. And when I had that argument with my brother, things that he did to me that hurt me years ago, that I kept hidden inside, came out whether I wanted to keep it or not. You can't control your tongue because you have an uncontrolling heart. The only person that can control the heart is the Holy Spirit. You and I was never intended to have master over your heart. Only the Holy Spirit. That's why I could tell 
if you've fully given your life to Christ by the way you talk. Woo! I could tell if you've fully given your life to Christ by the way you talk. God may save your soul, but you haven't given your mouth to him. You haven't allowed him to control what you say and what you don't say. The Holy Spirit will be the one that tells you what to say and not to say. Amen? Because emotions have languages. And a lot of times when we see people are frustrated and angry, it's because the heart haven't figured out a way to articulate what it's feeling. The Holy Spirit is the one that will let your emotions articulate in a healthy way. Amen? So I want you to remember that we were never meant to master the tongue because we can't master our hearts. The only way you master the tongue is to give all authority of your heart to the Holy Spirit so it can master your tongue. I'm going to go through some powers that I see that the tongue has. First of all, it says that the power of the tongue, it preaches, the, the power that the tongue has, the first thing that it says is it has the power to teach. The tongue has the power to teach. In verse 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. A little context, back in those days when they would have church or they would meet in the synagogue, um, you would be able to come and open the Torah and say something, and you would be able to expound on the Torah. It's not like we have now where we have preachers and communicators come. Actually, people from the crowd will be able to come and actually speak what's in their heart. And James is saying, be careful to not be teachers because they will be judged more strictly. Because you and I should know that God have a standard for how you and I are supposed to speak. And one day we all will be judged on the standard that God sets for how he wants his children kingdom-minded children of how to speak because we're supposed to speak God's words not the world's words amen so God's standard he said that be careful because one day you and I are going to be judged and if you want to talk kingdom talk you got to know how to talk God's way that's why a lot of people say that we may talk and use the same words but we talk in, in a different language I remember um, when I was growing up, you know, I grew up in Stanford, Connecticut, and I would go, we would go and visit our cousins in New York City, in Brooklyn, Flatbush. All right, Flatbush, stand up. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. And they would say things that I would, I know they speak in English, but I didn't understand their language. They would come up to me and just be like, hey, what up, son? I'm like, I'm not your, I'm, you're not my father. I didn't understand what they were saying. I remember the first time I came to Orlando, Florida, and I was going to school, and I remember the first days of my school, everybody was calling me a jit. I thought they were talking about an insect. True story. So I kept on looking on the floor for bugs or something. Everybody's like, hey, jit, come over here. I went home. My mom said, how was school? I said, it's great, but they have an infestation problem in our schools because they were using the same words, but we were speaking a different language. This is a pause note. Make sure when you're looking for a spouse, make sure that they know how to speak kingdom words. Because sometimes we're frustrated in our relationship because they don't know how to speak the language of the Father. We're looking for people that just knows how to use our words, but not know how to use God's words. If I'm with you and we're supposed to be husband and wife and I say, hey, get behind me, Satan, and you get behind me, there's a failure of communication. And so we got to know what's the standard that God has because God says one of these days when you come to eternity, he's going to judge you. It's going to be something like this. I'm going to go into eternity and God's going to say, Jonas, well done, good and faithful servant. Before I give you your treasures in heaven, there's a couple of things I have to talk to you about. We got to look at if you met the standard of how I told you you should speak. Did you say what I want you to say? He's going to look at He's going to say, I spoke love and you spoke hate. I spoke forgiveness, but you spoke unforgiveness. Are you speaking God's words? You know it's a taught thing. 
My question is, who is teaching you how to speak? We focus so much on how to live that we don't talk about how we should be speaking to each other. God looks at every aspect of your life. He says, you are supposed to represent me in action and in word. What is your standard? Are you allowing yourself to say everything? Do your words not have some restraint to where you think to yourself, well, I could say this, but do God want me to say this? Now, I know some people's like, this is just the way I am. I got to tell people the truth. And God's like, okay, you tell lies. That's your truth. But my truth gives life. What is your standard? Who is teaching you how to talk, brothers and sisters? Because if it's not God, you're not talking the kingdom language. Amen. So the tongue has the power to teach. What's even more important is whatever language you were taught to speak, you're going to teach it to somebody else. I remember just a couple of days ago, I'm talking on the phone, and I'm just talking to my friend. I'm like, bro, what's up? How you doing? Next thing I know, I asked my son if he wanted something to eat. And he's like, nah, bro. I said, boy, who are you talking to? Because he learned his pattern of speaking from his father. You could tell a lot about who's your father by how you speak. And if as our father is the Lord Almighty, then we could speak like our father. The second power that we have that we show is that the, the tongue has the power to guide. The tongue has the power to guide. Notice in verse 3 it says, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rooter makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speech. What he's trying to say is give an example that it's the small things that control the big things. It's the things that we don't see that controls the things that we do see. A rooter, right, is something that's on a ship. It's very small, but that is what controls the direction of a ship. A bit, if anybody ride horses in here. All right, we got a lot of Haitians in here, but none of them know how to ride a horse, I promise you. If you ever rode a horse, a, root, a, a bit is what um, you put on the horse's mouth, and if you pull on it, it goes back. If you let it go, it starts going forward. What he's trying to say is that your words control your destination. Depending on what you speak, it's where it's going to make you land in your life. Some of us, where we are today is because of what we said yesterday. Your words determine your destination. I'm going to say something crazy, and it might not make sense to some of you, but your words have legs. I can only tell you how many times that what I said two, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, somehow has found me in 2021 because my words have legs. Do you know that your words will outlive you? You and I may pass away, but our words will stay longer on earth than what we ever could live while we are alive. Your words have legs. My question is, where is your word taking you? Where are your words taking you? And the reason why it's like that, I believe, is because we are patterned after the Elohim. And it's, Elohim is God, the great creator. He creates. And the way God creates is the first thing he does is he speaks it out. And then it comes to pass. He says it, and then it comes to pass. God is trying to say is, hey, you have to know how to talk. Because if you're trying to do anything, you have to speak it first before you do anything. And it's not, no, no, a lot of people believe in, in positive thinking and, and, and the universe. Listen, I'm not speaking to the universe. The universe didn't die for me on the cross. I'm speaking to Jesus. 
And if Jesus speaks it before it is done, then I'm going to model that pattern and say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I shall be a wonderful father. In the name of Jesus, I shall be a wonderful husband. In God's name, we have to learn how to make our words go where we want it to go. Amen? Our words travel. That's how powerful it is. How many times have you met somebody and said, hey, I may not know you, but I heard you say this or that. Or hey, I don't know you, but my friend heard you say this or that. Because your words travel. If you are not ready to let your words travel throughout this earth, you need to be quiet and shut your mouth. That's how powerful it is. Your words travel, amen? I, I want to give a quick example of how the word travels. So um, many of you may not know, but I was hospitalized um, a few weeks ago. Well, not weeks ago, months ago. And um, I was in the hospital. And I was, um, they took me to the emergency room. And in this hospital, there's many emergency rooms, and the walls are really thin. And I was, I was pretty sick. And um, I remember hearing this man just a couple rooms down the hall. Now, we are not physically in the same room, but he's a couple rooms down the hall. And I remember him screaming, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, which is not what you want to hear in an emergency room. And I remember him just saying it over and over and over so much so I could feel like I'm right next to the man. So I'm praying to the Lord. I'm like, God, get me out of here. I need your peace. I need something to get me out because I can't experience your peace because I'm in this hospital. The Holy Spirit, I promise you, Ephesians, excuse me, Philippians 4, 7 flashed through my mind. And Philippians 4, 7 says, the peace that transcends understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I said, Lord, I need you to guard my body as well. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm not going to take you out of the emergency room because you're in the most peaceful place that you could ever be. It says the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You are already in Christ Jesus, so you are always in the peace of God, no matter where you are. That word I read just a few weeks ago followed me in the hospital room, and I was able to go through some of the most toughest moments in my life because the word travels. If you don't know God's word in the moments that you need it the most, how are we going to survive? God's word got to travel. And we got to know when we talk, our words have legs. Where are your words taking you? The last power that your mouth has is it has the power to praise, which is to build, and it has the power to destroy, which is to say curses. It says, and so blessings and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. We heard that in many other verses. It'll say that life and death is where? In the tongue. Amen. So we have the power of life and we have the power of death. Life builds up and death destroys. Um, there's, there's a great example I just want to show you. I have some people that's going to help me out. If I could have Emanuela come up on the stage. If I could have Franz come up on the stage. Amen. Now, what's amazing about our words is, although... We could say a word to somebody. We could leave them, but our words, which have legs, would stay with them. And so I'm just going to show you an example of how that works. I'm just going to say, so Emanuela, how you doing? Say hi to everybody. Hi. You're looking very nice, by the way. I'm just going to say some words of death to you. Now, this is just an example. What I say does, is not indicative of who you are. You're, you're beautiful, brown skin girl. You're amazing. So, not, this is just an example. So, if I would meet Emanuela and I would say these words, Emanuela, you're ugly. You would never amount to anything. God would never forgive you. Who can ever love a person like you? You crazy. And you are not good enough. 
and I really don't like the way you sing. Now, those are words of death. Now, I could leave Emanuela, and Emanuela could be walking, but my words stay with her. Your time. So as you can see, my words are still with her talking, talking because these are words of death, even though I'm not with her. But at the same moment, I could speak words of life. Mama Janice, if you come with me. Now, if I say those same words over and over again, yeah, what yeah. we do as human beings is we try to come back words of death with words of death. Manuela could come back and say, you crazy. Matter of fact, you can't sing. I don't like the way you preaching. That's not how the Bible wants us to combat death words. The Bible says the only way you defeat death is how? Through life. You can only defeat the words of death through the words of life. And if I speak the words of life to her, it would go something like this. I don't care what he's saying to you. We choose today to believe the report of the Lord. You are blessed and highly favored. You are a daughter of the king. You are alive and you shall live and not die. God, that Jesus died on the cross for you. You are an overcomer. I don't care what you did in the past. I don't care how you acted. I don't care what crimes. I, you are a child of God. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. There, you are a daughter of the Most High King. You can do all things who Christ, through Christ who strengthens you. God is a way maker in your life. He has a plan and Amen. a purpose for you. You are renewed. You are restored. You are revealed. God loves you, and we love you too. We will walk with you. You will overcome. You will succeed. You are beautiful. You are a child of God. God made you. You are made by the king. You are made perfect. You are perfect in Christ. You can do what he said you can do. And we Amen. refuse what the enemy say. We ban the words of the enemy. We throw them off your life. You are a child of God. You God made you. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. We thank God for you. We thank God for what he's doing in your life. You are beautiful. No matter what nobody say, you are beautiful. God made you, and you are wonderfully and fearfully made Amen. in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, thank you, you thank you, thank you, thank you. The word of God is more powerful than any word in the universe. Look how different it is when you have the word of God, which is the word of life being spoken over your life, except the word of death being spoken over your life. What's amazing about the heart is although our brains are the ones that manufacture those words, our hearts are the ones that choose which words that we believe in. And every day you have the choice to believe in the word of life or the word of death. How many times have we said something that was death to somebody else and we thought it didn't affect them but it ended up ruining their lives? And in the same moment, you could say one word of life and change the course of somebody's life. My question is, are your words words of life? Are your words words of death? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you really know the power of your words, you start to be careful what you allow into your mind. Make an inventory of what you're saying this week. I promise you, it has the power to teach, has the power to guide, has the power to build up, and it has the power to destroy. Learn how to speak the language of God, and it will be able to control your whole life. If you receive that word this morning, Give God all the glory and honor and praise. Amen. Amen.